Good morning. Today on Spotlight, the push for economic development and financial stability in Oakland County. What are local and state leaders doing to keep that engine fine-tuned and operating with all deliberate speed? We'll ask Robert Wittenberg, the treasurer of one of Michigan's richest counties. And later on our Sunday morning program, Anthony White, the artistic director and president of the Detroit Youth Choir, will check in with us about his latest accomplishments and a few words about getting ready for Michigan's Republicans. It's Sunday, July the 17th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. All right, let me uh, take you back a little bit. I can't tell you the number of times uh, the late L. Brooks Patterson came into our studio and sat across from me, and the first thing out of his mouth was, Chuck, Oakland County is the engine that drives Michigan's economy. So if that is indeed still true, why in the world would Oakland County need a land bank? Well, I think it's really important to have this land bank because it's an economic development tool. And so there are some properties here that could use uh, a little TLC uh, that are either, they've been sitting vacant, um, obsolete, uh, it gives us more tools in our tool toolbox because we currently, within our office, operate like a quasi land bank. We, when properties don't sell at the auction after the foreclosure process, the three-year foreclosure process, uh, they sit in our office currently, but we don't have the same advantages that a land bank has uh, to kind of expedite the process, some of the tax incentives, brownfield redevelopment uh, opportunities. And so this will give us a, a better way to make these you know bring these properties back on the tax rolls and so i think it's really important uh to be able to do that and it doesn't require us to do anything specifically we don't have to do certain things we don't have to uh but it's a tool sitting property. there but it's a tool exactly it's another tool in our toolbox and uh working with you know specifically pontiac i know pontiac is a community uh that has some property there uh, mm -hmm. that we will all work together on. The, the, we have been in, in talks with the leadership in that community, the mayor and the council members, uh, as well as the state land bank, and all rowing in the same direction to make sure that we are uh, you know, bringing properties back onto the tax rolls, which is, is for the benefit of the entire community. Sure, it helps out the entire county. Um, let's step back just a little bit. This has been talked about for a while. You finally got it through. It took a partnership, what, with the State Land Bank, the Oakland County Commission, the County Executive's Office, and the Treasurer's Office? Did I leave anybody out? That, no, that's it. So the, everyone had to sign off on that. So we had bipartisan support from the Board of Commissioners, which was really important, uh, the County Executive's team, and we worked really closely with them, and then the State Land Bank. And so the State Land Bank has to sign, we all have to sign off on it. So we, in essence, laid the foundation, and we are now seeking uh, applicants for the board. There's going to be a five member board that runs the land bank authority and it'll be uh, the treasurer. So I'll serve on there. The executive or his as of Colt, you know, it's Coulter, his designee, and then three members that are appointed by our board of commissioners. So one has to come from city government, one has to come from village or township government, and then one is a general public member. And they have to have a background in uh, economic development, housing, or real estate. So we want to make sure that this is a working board, uh, that it's not just a ceremonial title that you're just you know serving on the board. We want uh, to be able to come together and really work on some projects that will better the entire county. Sure. Um, would you say that foreclosures, whether it's uh, residential or commercials, is up tremendously or it's about at the same level? It's just making sure, as you said earlier, that you don't let those properties sit there um, and not become a tax base and put a good person behind it. Yeah, so the, the number, we actually were, were quite surprised, right? At the, original, uh, at the start of the pandemic, we were really worried about what would happen, but obviously there were the safety nets and the safeguards put in place at the federal level, and people utilize those, you know, that money uh, to pay their taxes and pay their bills. The same thing with their water bills, uh, that's something we saw. So there was not an uptick, thankfully, but we had a moratorium on foreclosures in 2020 and 2021. So we thought our number would be quite a bit higher, but it wasn't actually. Uh, we have about 374 parcels uh, that were foreclosed this year. 
and almost all of them, I mean, over 90% of them are actually vacant. It's either vacant land or a vacant structure. So that was really good. Uh, and so, you know, we're really excited about the opportunity to develop some of these parcels if they are not sold. And that's something I don't want to try to you know mix the two, but there's also the land sale, which is, you know, we're statutorily required to do a land sale of those foreclosed properties. And that's coming up on August 12th and people can actually go online and start bidding currently. Sure. And we'll drill down on that a little bit more in the next segment. Uh, before we go to the next segment, though, when these properties go into the land bank um, and people get these, does that avail them of other resources that they might not otherwise be able to get? So the land bank, uh, the way we look at it is that it's not nothing is required to go to the land bank. Mm -hmm. That's the, the point of the board. The five member board can decide what kind of projects we think would be worthwhile to undertake with the land bank board and the land bank itself. So currently, like I said, in our office, we actually hold property that in essence has no value at this point. It didn't sell at the auction, uh, at multiple auctions. We've been trying to work with people in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have a, just over 400 and some parcels within our office that we are hosting, uh, we are maintaining, uh, we're looking for someone who, it, it could be neighbors for side lot programs. We're looking for people who want to take on uh, some of these properties because we don't want to hold them. We want to put them back on the tax rolls. We want to give them to the community. Uh, ultimately, the land bank can decide if they want to utilize some of those properties, properties from the state land bank, properties from the city. Uh, you know, we have 63 cities, villages, and townships here in Oakland County. And so I think it's a way that we could all work together and row in the same direction. Uh, to get them back onto the tax roll. So they're useful to the community. So that's a conversation that, that will have to happen. Nothing sure. is required to happen though. It's not like we have to put properties into the land bank. It is just an option to be able to do that. And then within that uh, you know, pro uh, process, we can expedite you know, the process itself. And there's those tax incentives that we were mentioning earlier that you would not have that opportunity if the land bank wasn't in existence. Absolutely. I totally understand. We're going to take a quick little break. When we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit about this uh, virtual auction that you've got going on and some of the other things that you've been working on there in Oakland County. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight, talking to Robert Wittenberg. He is the treasurer in Oakland County. You recently had the first virtual tax foreclosure. Uh, how did that go and how exactly does that work? So no, the, the, it's the foreclosure auction. So we are required by state statute if people don't pay their taxes for a three year period. So this year was for 2019 or prior year taxes. Uh, if they don't pay their taxes, then their their property is foreclosed upon. Uh, we did a, a really robust outreach program. Uh, we we don't want to foreclose on properties, right? It, it, a foreclosure impacts uh, the owner of the property, the community. So we really did a robust outreach plan uh, to make sure that people were aware that they could reach out to us, that we were here to help them, that we could get them on a repayment schedule. Uh, so we really pushed hard, uh, and and thankfully our numbers were quite low. But of those parcels, uh, it goes to an auction. And in years past, uh, the auction was actually done in person, uh, but that wasn't, uh, that wasn't a really viable option this year. The, the location that we've used years prior wasn't available to us. The auctioneer uh, was no longer doing the work. And so we thought of uh, doing this online and we're working with a company that does this with over 70 counties here in the state of Michigan. And it's virtual so that people, uh, there's more transparency, there's more accessibility, uh, and so the auction has not happened yet. It is actually open right now. Uh, you can go on our website, oakgov.com slash treasurer, and you'll have some information. But it actually is open now through August 12th, and then it closes on August 12th. So you can put in your pre-bids now, and then on August 12th is when uh, it's like eBay, right? It's, a, it's, right. it's where you go on there and you put your, your highest bid in. Uh, now's the time to get your name in the hat <laughs> that's exactly right and so and and like i said from before most of the the parcels that are uh at the auction will be on the auction site uh they are uh they're sitting vacant 
So just FYI, but it has pictures, it has all the information, and we want people who want to be good community partners. We want people who uh, want to invest in the community, want to take these parcels and, and bring them back onto the tax rolls uh, in the best way possible to support whatever community. And, and, and there are properties all across the county. It's not just one specific community. There are uh, some all across the county. Sure. You recently updated your county investment pol policy. Um, how long had it been and what's the significance of that? So it had been uh, 20 years, actually, since we had updated our investment policy here in the office. Uh, but we are uh, we have to abide by Public Act 20, which is state statute. So we're very conservative with our investments. So this is the, the surplus fund. So this is the money that we're not actively using uh, that we are investing. And so uh, safety, we have the, the SLY acronym, safety, liquidity, yield. So we're always uh, worried about the taxpayer's dollars, making sure that we are safeguarding that, uh, the taxpayer dollars, then liquidity, being able to pay our bills, and then yield is kind of that third leg on a tripod. Uh, that's important to us. So we, we work within Public Act 20, but we wanted uh, to update the policy to give us a little more flexibility. So the amount that we could invest in particular securities, the time that we could invest, we just extended that. Uh, we've been, you know, uh, there have been groups who recommended up to 10 years. We thought that was a little far out. Uh, we extended it from three years to five years. Uh, but this was a big, big undertaking as well, because this had to go through our board of commissioners. Uh, so we had to have buy-in and we worked with them. Uh, but thankfully, we have a really good working relationship with our, our executive and, and, and his team and our board of commissioners. So it's been, uh, it's been great working with all of them and kind of rowing in the same direction for the residents of Oakland County. Sure. Very quickly, um, time's always our worst enemy in these type of interviews. Your property tax foreclosure protection, um, if people want to get more information about that, they can just go to the Oakland County Treasurer's website? Yeah, yeah, they can call our office. We're here to help. I, th I think the moral of everything I want to say, the, the, the gist of it is that we are always here to help. We want to help people in the community. Uh, go to our website, oakgov.com slash treasurer, or call 248-858-0611. If there's anything we can do to help, uh, we would love to be here as a resource, and we want to help this entire community. We want everyone in Oakland County to be able to continue to thrive here in Oakland County. So we're here to help you and support you. You spent six years in the legislature, state representative, representing uh, various communities in Oakland County. Uh, how well did that prepare you for what you're doing today? I think it was a, a great preparation for what I'm doing. It's, it's public service. I think of myself as a public servant. Uh, and I think the most important thing is that government has to work for people. We have to solve their problems. Uh, we got to be there to help them. And so in this capacity, it, it is different, right? I'm not in the legislative role that I was in at the state level. Uh, but on a day to day basis, we are just trying to solve people's problems. We're trying to be here to help support them. Uh, in our office, we have uh, our, you know, our financial empowerment center. So we want to really help people to be able to thrive in our communities, businesses, uh, entrepreneurs to be able to open businesses here in Oakland County. So on a day to day basis, I think my the, the most important thing we're doing uh, in our office is supporting all the residents of Oakland County. And and anytime someone calls our office, we always tell them we're here to help. We're here to support them. And if it's something that we don't necessarily deal with in our office specifically, that we can, you know, kind of handhold them and pass them along to someone that might be able to help them. We don't always want to just be uh, a dead end where someone calls us and, and, and we're, we don't have a uh, solution for them. So it's been a lot of fun working here. Uh, I really enjoy it. And I like working in Pontiac more than working in Lansing. Uh, I, I don't miss that drive. <laughs> Uh, I don't miss some of the, the partisan bickering, uh, but here I really feel like we have the opportunity to serve the public on a day-to-day -day basis. All uh, right, so. and as I mentioned to you in the break, it's a lot easier getting home for dinner on time. Uh, Robert Wittenberg, uh, County Treasurer for Oakland County, thanks so much for joining us today on Spotlight, talking about the various economic initiatives in your county, and we'll stay in touch with you. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. It's our pleasure. And when we come back, we'll check in with Anthony White, the artistic director and president of the Detroit Youth Choir. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight. Joining me now is Anthony White. He is the artistic director and president of the Detroit Youth Concert Choir. Uh, good having you. Good seeing you again. You doing all right? 
good seeing you, uh, Mr. Stokes. It's like, it's been a while. It's it has been a, been a while. Well, you know, we've all been trying to navigate through this crazy pandemic. Um, yeah. Everybody knows the Detroit Youth Choir. Uh, America's Got Talent puts you on the map. Uh, but yes. give us an update because you guys haven't stopped since then. And uh, what's on your table right now? Well, right now, uh, uh, I don't know if everyone knows, but uh, we just recently performed at Carnegie Hall, New York, uh, under the National Concert uh, uh, Organization. Mm -hmm. And that was a big deal for our organization. Uh, we also uh, had a trip to Cincinnati where we uh, joined the Cincinnati Youth Choir in a workshop slash festival, choir Wonderful. festival. And we visited our Toronto um, Youth Choir uh, counterparts in a conference called the Boom Conference. And that was, I want to say, a couple of weeks ago. So we've been kind of busy. We haven't stopped. <laughs> All right. You're working on those frequent flyer miles. Um, yeah. You also have something going with Disney Plus, uh, a docu-series. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yes. Yeah, so the Disney Plus uh, slash, um, I want to say Blumhouse and Imagine Productions, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to take on our organization to tell the story of uh, a youth choir from the city of Detroit. Uh, and our ups and downs and and pretty much our backstage um, antics and and things to make our organization go. And also they're following me all the time. A anytime that they have, they follow me. So um, it's going to be coming, uh, I want to say 2023, uh -huh. early 2023. So if you have Disney Plus, please watch our show. It's going to be called Choir. Excellent. And if you don't have Disney Plus, you now got time to go get Disney Plus. Um, yeah. and, and you no longer have a private life if they're following you all the time, but I'm sure it's going to be good. Uh, all, yeah. all that's behind you now. Um, yeah. You also have a show coming up, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Um, I assume that's about Michael Jackson? Yeah, our, we, we need to give him some more flowers. So. This is our tribute to the late, great Michael Jackson. Uh, we have two parts to the show. You actually have a part one, which is a concert. That's from our, that's by our center stage choir. Yes. And you have part two, which is a musical production uh, written and directed by one of our staff members, uh, Dan Daniel Valentine. And it's going to be exciting. I mean, these kids have been working, 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 and it's going to be at the Hawk Theater uh, in Farmington Hills. And that's July 22nd through the 24th, so that's coming right around the corner. It's right around the corner. Right. And these kids have been really working hard. I mean, they, I mean, sweat everything. Just trying to get the, <laughs> trying to get the essence of Michael Jackson. Right. Uh, tickets are still available for that performance? Oh, yes. Uh, if you ever see a flyer on social media, you may uh, scan the QR code at the bottom and, and the tickets will just pop up. All right. Last time I talked to you, Anthony White, uh, is when we made you our Newsmaker of the Year. And at that time, yeah. you were looking for a new home. You have a new home. Uh, yes. Mary Grove College, um, former Mary Grove College. Uh, that's your home base now, right? Yes. Our headquarters is located on the great campus of my alma mater, uh, Marigold College. And it's kind of a 360 or however you say it, um, uh, move where I'm actually in my old music department. That's where the Detroit Youth Choir headquarters are. Excellent. And um, I, gradu I graduated in 2005. Uh -huh. So uh, it's great to be back home at Marigold and hopefully we can be there for uh, as long as I'm president and artistic director. You know, <laughs> what, what what's long range planned? And I don't even know if you have time to make long range plans because you're moving so fast and you're involved in so many things. And you've got what, I guess, four different choirs now uh, throughout that age span of eight to 18. Um, so yes, obviously you've got more people that want to be a part of the organization than you could physically take. But that's good news. <laughs> yes, our, our long uh, our long term, our long term plans is to actually become an after-school academy of arts. 
So uh, when the kids get out of their eight to three school, they get to come to our organization from uh, four to eight every day and do music, choir, uh, piano, uh, studio. Uh, we have actually two studios in our in our uh, space in Mary Grove. And we're like, like you said, we're growing, um, but we, we're, we are gonna officially become an after school academy for all of, all of the youth in the city of Detroit and the surrounding parts. Well, congratulations. And uh, that's uh, really good news. And I know just from having followed you over the years that uh, where these kids go after they leave the Detroit Youth Choir is most important yeah. that you keep in touch with them and that almost all of them go to college or uh, some form of academics afterwards and they're productive uh, in whatever they decide to pursue as their life calling. So thank you so much. Uh, stay in touch with us and best of luck yeah. on the upcoming performance July 22nd through the 24th. Thank you, sir. Thank you and nice being back here, back home, WXYZ. All right, it's our pleasure. And when we come back, uh, a few words about the Republicans are coming. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And finally today, we invite you to join us this Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. for our live Republican gubernatorial debate here at Channel 7 Broadcast House. We're partnering with our sister script stations, Fox 17 and Fox 47 in Grand Rapids and Lansing and the Michigan GOP. It will be the final statewide televised face-to-face -face meeting of the candidates whose names will appear on the Republican primary ballot. We hope you tune in for this pure Michigan summer debate. That's it for today. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.